Good morning, everyone. Today is day 16 of Advent. So today we're celebrating Our Lady of the Advent because today we enter into the final stages before the birthing of Christ. And in traditional Catholic liturgical spheres, this is celebrated as Mary's Day. If you look back historically and imagine that she's just one week away from giving birth and has a sense of what's coming, you get the the quality of what this day is about. I'd like to begin with a chant, which is Queen of the World, Regina Mundi. You can keep your eyes open or close them, either way. Regina Mundi Dinisima Maria Virgo Perpetua Intercede Pronostra Pahade Ezalute Quei Genuisti Christum Dominum Salvatore Omnium Mary, be in our midst. Inspire my words. Inspire our hearts. And let our devotional this morning be guided by you, be excited by you, and root us even more deeply into the divine mystery of God in form. So just like Jesus, I have had a really, really close relationship with Mary all my life. And it's from that experience that I share this morning before we enter into our meditation. Mary definitely is an embodiment of many of the popular qualities attributed to her. The humility, the gentleness, the receptivity, the contemplative nature. I've always experienced Mary as being very robust in those qualities and ones that we can look to her to develop within ourselves as well. But she also has a a warrior-like quality about her. She has a power that seems to penetrate by presence and wisdom. And she has a playfulness that you can see in all the recorded apparitions that we have of her with different human beings all around the world and in all generations. She seems to also have this quality where she's playing with them, almost like a little twinkle in her eye. She's formidable. I know every time I have experienced Mary's presence very powerfully and immediately, there has been an utter silencing that happens in my whole being. One time when I was in a chapel in Santa Cruz, I was, I think 19, I might've been 20, maybe 21. And I was praying the rosary. And as I began to pray the rosary, Mary I, appeared before me, but I was, it was not as though I was in this world anymore. It was, I was straddling into this etheric realm where she was. And the utter silence that came through me had a quality of sweetness and all-encompassing nature to it. And I was still uttering the words of this rosary, this rosary coming up, but there was this big thing that was in my throat, and I can't explain it, but it was like a big, round, energetic ball in my throat, and it would come up and out my mouth. And as it came up and out my mouth, the fragrance was intoxicating. And I discovered 
that it was roses that were rising up from my throat, up through my mouth, and coming out with each utterance of Hail Mary. In it was an all-penetrating, all-knowing presence that moved through every cell of my body. And it was also incredibly sweet and silencing. So we underestimate, I think, in our culture, the actual power of Mary. And I'll be honest, I think it's still because she's a woman. I think that it's nice to paint a woman who's so powerful as demure and gentle and downcast eyes. I think that that is very true of the divine feminine. The divine feminine is such an all-embracing, all-encompassing presence that there is something so inward, so contemplative, that those images we have of Mary are very accurate. But what is failed to be represented in the images of Mary and in the culture is the fact that from that very place, there is the birthing quality. And the birthing quality is one of the messiest, most demanding, transformative events that happens in life. If you've had children, think of what it's like when your water breaks and it's time. It is time. And you are giving birth then. You're participating it as, in, as the birth giver, but you are also surrendering into it. Mary carries that, it's a Kali-like transformative quality in, our na- in her nature. And I have always experienced that her presence alone accomplishes what she shows up to be present about. So what is your relationship with Mary like? This is a day to relish it to take it to the next level, to invite her in, in a new way as the lady of the advent, which is the feast of today, or simply as some form of Mary. In my seminary training, one of my theses was on Avalokiteshvara, which is a Buddha and a Bodhisattva in some Buddhist traditions, coming from chapter 25 of the Lotus Sutra. Avalokiteshvara is popularly known as Kuan Yin. And this Buddha nature is the perceiver of all the world's sounds. But in the perceiving of all the world's sounds, emission goes forward from the perception that is a movement of compassion, of healing, and of transformation. Hence, we have Kuan Yin, the Bodhisattva or the goddess of compassion. Mary is that presence as well. So the devotional this morning is very simple. We're going to do something of a litany. Your part is going to sound like this. And then I'm going to chant one invocation to Mary. For instance, Holy Mother of God, Hear us, Mary full of grace, hear us. Your response is the hear us part. You'll catch on as we do it. And remember when we invoke that way, we're not grasping for something or lowering ourselves to a, a greater creature. We're resonating into the field of the divine feminine presence so that the perceiver of all the world's sounds, the divine feminine that's pulsing all the world's sounds, may transform and enliven and quicken us. So see if you can situate your your invocation of hear us a little bit more there and a little less in the traditional petitioning way that some of the Hail Marys can be prayed. All right, so I invite you to close your eyes. Feet on the ground. Heart open. And in your own silent way, invite in Mary.
let us breathe in her presence. Whether you sense it or imagine it or simply know it, Today, Mary, we celebrate you as Theotokos, as the one bearing God. And both in the collective consciousness and in the historical memory, you are so pregnant with the divine right now that you're bursting. Let us be that pregnant with the divine that our entire focus, all our faculties may be caught up in that pregnancy, in the wonder, in the joy, in the anticipation, in the little bit of trepidation, but in the confidence and audacity that we know who we are, just as you know who you are. And we begin our litany. Holy Mother of God, hear us. Divine Feminine, hear us. Bearer of all good, Hear us, sacred friend, hear us, perceiver of all the world sounds, hear us, embodiment of God, Hear us, wisdom playing before the Lord of all. Hear us, bearer of the light. Hear us, the light itself. Hear us, Mother of Heaven and Earth and all realms. Hear us, Warrior Divine. Hear us, Knower of all truth. Hear us, beloved of God, hear us, lover of all creation, hear us, gentle and humble of heart, Hear us, Buddha Bodhisattva, Mary Saint, hear us. May this day be a day that we walk a path of Mary, a path sweet with the fragrance of roses, a path of utter confidence, of true surrender, of being like Mary and with Mary, Theotokos in our lives. 
When you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes. Tomorrow we begin the O antiphons. It will lead us right up to our very last day. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, everyone. Blessings. Namaste.